Nutritionists always say, I've seen them on the morning shows, I'm sure you have too, shop on the outside of the grocery store. Fresh food, produce, all the colorful stuff, that's what you want. But that food isn't nearly as nutritious as many people believe. Maybe even the nutritionists themselves. Carrots, cabbage, uh-uh. It's a problem that could be linked to everything from obesity to the world's disappearing bees. The culprit might surprise you. Who hasn't dreamt of diving face first into a giant cake? <laughs> or going absolutely nuts on a stack of pizzas? That's basically what the world's bees are doing, and it could be leading to their sudden, massive disappearance. A scientist named Irakli Loladzi has been trying to sound the alarm since the late 1990s as a PhD student in math. Not many people listened. Until recently, the professor realized that as plants grow faster, their nutrients plunge and carbs increase. What makes plants grow? Carbon. This all goes back, he says, to climate change. The climate warms as carbon is released into the atmosphere in the form of CO2, carbon dioxide. Here's what happens next, according to Politico. Rising CO2 revs up photosynthesis, the process that helps plants transform sunlight to food. This makes plants grow, but it also leads them to pack in more carbohydrates like glucose at the expense of other nutrients that we depend on, like protein, iron, and zinc. When animals like bees come along and munch on the plants, there's more to eat and more sugar, but not as much nutrition. Humans depend on many of the same food sources, and scientists say all the natural fruits and veggies that we eat today just aren't the same as the ones our parents and grandparents grew up on. In 2004, a landmark study of fruits and vegetables found that everything from protein to calcium, iron, and vitamin C had declined significantly across most garden crops since 1950. Initially, most experts thought this had to do with the plants that we were growing and planting. Now they suspect the environment plays a larger role. Looking ahead, as the earth continues to warm, these agricultural effects could lead to even worse health outcomes than the growing obesity rates. The developing world could be devastated. A group of researchers put out their best estimates of what we could see by the year 2050. It's startling. 150 million people could face protein deficiency, especially in countries with plant-heavy diets like India and Bangladesh. With zinc levels declining, 138 million moms and infants could be at risk of poor health. And thanks to a significant drop in dietary iron, 1 billion mothers and 354 million children could develop anemia, increasing their odds of serious illness or even death. I chatted with Professor Lolazzi about his research. He discovered this back in the 90s and what he sees happening next. Plus, based on his math background, can this be not only stopped, but reversed? You were kind of the canary in the coal mine on this issue in many ways. Do you see the acceleration going so quickly such that it's going to be hard to stop? Right, those changes are already happening if we compare crops uh, right now to those that say were raised, uh, you know, 100 or even 50 years ago. And uh, CO2 keeps rising. So every year we'll see a stronger and stronger effect on uh, crop and wild plant quality. You know, we, we show that the minerals decline, essential minerals like you know, potassium, calcium, magnesium, iron, zinc. As you look ahead, what do you see as far as implications, policy or otherwise? Uh, the U.S. government actually made uh, released a report where its key finding and one of those with the high confidence is that rising CO2 lowers crop quality. Now, I, I really don't know how the future findings will translate to our policy, but uh, I do hope that they will because our nutrition, essentially every bite of our food one or another way is affected. And how does it translate to the plate? Um, you know, I know that you actually have it right there. Yeah, actually my, my wife put some C3 plants here and those are typically what, what you, uh, you know, you would eat and cook. And so my calculations show, based on the results of researchers from uh, hundreds of experiments around the world, that approximately uh, you add a, a teaspoon, teaspoon of sugar of starch to to pretty much everything everything you eat. Uh, and you know what is the cumulative effect uh, for the rest of your life if, if you keep doing that? Unreal, uh, especially in these times when you think, hey, I'm doing the best thing for my body. I'm going, you know to get this at, 
you know, the grocery store and I'm eating healthy and then maybe you are, but not as healthy as you might think. Right, exactly. I mean, eating veggies is definitely better than eating donuts. Uh, but uh, the problem is that we have this extra carbs and protein declines. And at the same time, not only we have extra carbs, but we also get less calcium and magnesium. The problem is that uh, while locally you can address it, maybe with enriching soils and so on, the effect is global, really affecting every, every field and every plant on Earth. You are a professor of mathematics, and you apply it to things like uh, biology and agriculture. So let me ask you, mathematically, can this process and this phenomenon be reversed? We can, though, uh, improve our nutrient supply. And uh, theoretically, theoretically, everybody can get nutritious food. But the problem is all these obstacles, anywhere from distribution to chase for high yields, completion of soils. So I'm not a policymaker, really. You know, our scientist's job is to generate knowledge. And um, I, I don't see really easy solutions, unfortunately. You see that teaspoon of sugar and starch on all those veggies? We have some pizza waiting back there for us, and I'm not going to feel bad about it because, you know, you don't know what's in veggies. <laughs> Just kidding. They're very good for you.